have just a few days ago finally gotten the diagnosis of being bipolar disorder. It makes me do crazy things, think crazily, and act crazily. Over the years, I have suffered episodes, and I didn't know what they were, where they came from, these feelings that always made me feel different from the inside for years. On the 3rd of October, I had yet another episode that drove me out of my house. I was I found myself racing to Zenit Bank to withdraw money to do work on back of my phone lines that I had destroyed myself. It was as my husband tried to stop me on my way to Zenit Bank that I realized that that was even a Saturday. When that failed, still acutely manifesting from bipolar disorder, I found my way to Southgate Hotel, where Nollywood people usually be camp and make departures from. Prior to that day, I didn't know I had bipolar, but my husband did. He did because two weeks before the 12th of October, I had had yet another serious episode that landed me at the hospital, still First Delta American Hospital. It was so bad, I regret most of the actions that came with that episode. But my hospital didn't tell me that he was bipolar when I was discharged. Dr. Isiomo Okoba, the doctor and the owner of First Delta American Hospital, they had told my husband on that visit that your wife was bipolar, but my husband was finding a better time to bring the news to me when another relapse happened. And it happened this time because he tried to get me to take my meds, to take my medications. And like I said, I didn't know that I was already a bipolar um, victim, a bipolar patient, I meant to say. I didn't know. But I took out my anger on him when he said, did you take your drugs? And growing up, I didn't used to like to take drugs. I still don't. But look at all the drugs that he gave me from the visit to the hospital two weeks ago. Albumet, this is for pregnancy, they said. Olazepam, famous sulfate, folic acid, B-complex, and haloperidol. I started flushing this down the toilet instead of taking them. Three days I didn't take them and it resulted in the embarrass embarrassing display that I displayed in front of Southgate. My husband said, take your drugs, but I got angry with him. Like, how dare you try to swim it like those doctors and nurses that they were mentally ill? That was his only crime. I flipped it on him like an enemy. Oh. I heard myself saying crazy things mm. like I'm leaving my husband. I, I will not leave my husband. Mm. I will never leave my husband and my children and my home. My family, having a home, mm. being Mrs. Fanny and being mother to mm. the beautiful children God has given me is too much blessings to take for granted. And so I say this to I say this to as many as are out there that care about me as a person and care about my brand as such I find that I didn't leave my home and I'm not leaving. Saying that I'm living with my life in the video you saw on 3rd October is one out of the many great things that I say and that many bipolar disorder patients say when facing episodes or crisis. I realize that the video I also made defending my husband being alleged being wife Peter has got some people even distributing more mess. My younger brother, whom the only time I have seen him, whom the last time I had seen him is May 12th last year. I had my son, Chiliri, on the 10th of May 2019. I saw you, Aike, on the 12th of May. I have never set eye on you since then till now. It's over a year, it's almost two years. Even when I called you early this year, you didn't pick my call. You didn't return it either. And here you are out there, putting fire where there's none.
creating doubt so that no one will know what to believe anymore because you're my family member. But here I am, seated and telling the whole world that personally, as charity, over the years, even before becoming Mrs. Fanny, there have been an age-long strain between me and the AK family. So it's no surprise that my brother will come to say things that a detractor would say. IK, stop it. It's not cute. Stop it, because I deserve better from you as a sibling, whom I have been nothing but good to. I also realize that there are colleagues out there who, like Victoria Nyama and Georgina Onoaha, I choose to translate your videos and concerns as part of you loving me, because it takes love for someone to go out there and starts to make proclamations or raise alarm on behalf of the person. But in this case, there is no need for any alarm that has been raised. But this is not me trying to save my marriage. It's not damage control. I'm pregnant for what would have been my fifth child, if not for one of the post-traumatic situations I've had in the past, all of which I have said I will translate into a movie. But hey, guys, I'm back. I'm back as Mrs. Fanny. I was discharged from the hospital on the 7th of October. My husband and I, we are in Abuja, have been for the past days. I thank him for his patience and understanding throughout this trying period. I'm so glad that I, there's finally a name for waiting to do me since. Because if now by doing something they do me, I wasn't really understanding. I finally do with these drugs. I finally know this, that that thing called bipolar disorder, I'm one of the many people out there that have it. And no, I'm not ashamed to say that I have it. I'm living my story and the experience of these things. And it's a learning process and a growth call for me. And I'm embracing it totally. I even want to use this opportunity to thank some very good and close family friends of ours, like Benny in Houston, Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kula in Atlanta. Thank you, Ken and Yabwe. You're also in the Western world and you know about these things and how it comes upon people out there. And so my case is one out of the many cases. It's not something to be ashamed of, I reiterate. In fact, just like I hinted earlier that the Wheel in Motion picture um, highlights in details my story because I strongly believe that many women who have left their homes did out of bipolar disorder. You probably didn't know it wasn't diagnosed. In my case, Dr. Enebe, still one of the affiliations from the first Delta Hospital, sat with me for long hours of diagnosis. He had me explaining my life experiences from when I was a teenager and how something that happened as a teenager left me scarred and untreated. Internally, I didn't heal from that. Then growing up to having a company with my husband and having to mentally push through and miss the inherent um, struggles that companies in general face here in Nigeria. All of this have built up into post-trauma depression, have built up into bipolar. But I'm fine now, guys. I miss my meds. That's what happened. I missed my meds. I didn't know I should never do that. And I will never miss them again. And for my colleagues, like I said earlier, uh, there are some that, like Ernest Toby, I thank him for coming to Southgate that day. It was him that he said, can you go chat with my brother? I recall he did say that. And the moment Dr. Onyeka, Doctor, the doctor that works with first at the American Hospital, Dr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeager, confirmed that indeed that this is one of my episodes that he did his best and helped with some other people. Obi Nukezo was there and many other people whose names I cannot begin to call on that one. But I'm thankful mm -hmm. to everybody that, that have loved me for all these years. Mm -hmm. Guys, God win in our situation. And I love my husband. I didn't lose him. He, he doesn't beat me, and this is no damage control. Please, if you love me, stop spreading the lies.